pastor who started a church with, what, 30 families? Built it up to over 3,000 families? Anointed by true parents to be our leader in this generation. Would you stand to your feet as we welcome? It's an honor to present to you my brother in God, Dr. Yunjin Moon. Let's give him some praise. Come on. Come on. Let's thank God today. Love you, brother. God bless. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Please, 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 please. Uh, I first want to thank all the incredible speakers uh, today. Um, truly, it's, it's so inspirational to see uh, the principle taught by such amazing pastors, men and women of God. Let's give them all a great round of applause, everybody. Give it up for our amazing pastors and today. Also heavy in everybody's heart is the, uh, the, the tragedy in Connecticut, so we want to also extend our prayers and also our concern uh, for those families and, and those children. Um, you know, we have to, I, I, I saw one pastor write a tweet and it said, we have to keep the words evil and demonic in our vocabulary because this is evil. And so remembering the children, also remembering this kind of act is unforgivable. Um, and, and really we extend our hearts uh, to, to those families. You know, today I want to share with you uh, something, if I can get a little space on this thing. You know, uh, for me, I've always had, uh, I've had many, 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 uh, you know, uh, questions. And also growing up in this movement, also uh, following true parents, and from when I was young, just born into the movement, etc. Uh, really tr hearing so many things about our movement, uh, hearing how we would, uh, you know, uh, move the world and how we would transcend all boundaries of religion and race and nation, language, etc. But those things, unfortunately, I, I just viewing and watching, uh, I never saw them come to pass, despite the hard work and efforts and toil of uh, so many brothers and sisters. You know, uh, when True Father passed away, I think this was one of the probably most difficult um, things for our movement uh, because we all saw him. He was always so healthy. He was always so vibrant. He was always so strong. He was 93 and he could still whoop you, <laughs> you know, and uh, he could still move across a room really quick <laughs> and get you. Um, you know, he was so big, filled with vigor and so much love. And uh, I think for us, it was just the most, one of the most crushing things. I think a lot of us are honestly still grieving because of, uh, uh, we, of True Father Ascending. And honestly, I've, I've, I've spent the last two years of my life just chasing Father around every day. Uh, we were, wherever he would be, if he was on the boat, we'd run on the boat. And I, I hate being on the boat. I hate fishing. It's probably my, I, 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 out of all the hobbies, I, fishing is not on my list. Um, especially on the oceans, you know, with the waves that he would challenge. God, you know, um, with, your, with your stomach and your throat all day long, it's just, this is not heaven. Um, and I would remember just having to chase him every day, whether he's in a boat or he's in Comanda Island or in Seoul or in in Las Vegas or in America, wherever he would be, we would have to be with him. And I think probably that was uh, probably one of the most challenging times of my life. Um, but also when I reflect on it, of course, one of the greatest blessings that I was able to partake in. One of the things that always, uh, you know, uh, I think really uh, sad in my heart was after Father ascended, he didn't visit me. You know, I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't, he didn't come in dreams or he didn't come in visions or, you know, I, nothing, just silent. Um, I remember when my brother Yong Jung passed, I mean, Yong Jung was, you know, I could, I saw him in dreams and, you know, and, um, and also uh, all such things. I had, had experience with Yong Jung, holding my hand and things like that. But here I am with true father. I've been with him for the last two years. He's just the center of my entire existence. 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to be the head of the movement, but I'm really chasing him around every day. <laughs> um, uh, you know, and, uh, and he's, not, he's not coming back. He's not v- visiting me. Uh, so I was really uh, crushed. You know, I thought maybe if I change my hairstyle, he'll come. <laughs> you know, because it was getting kind of long and luscious. And, uh, but I said, you know, I got to shave it off again, how I like it, you know, nice and bald. Um, but, you know, I think many people say I look like a Zen monk. And um, Zen monks are known to shock people. So actually today I hope I can shock you a little bit today. But, uh, but True Father finally visited me. He finally came on December 5th in the morning. And so that for me was huge and it was so meaningful. Um, it was probably the, the clearest he's ever come. Um, December 5th is the day actually ACLC, the executive committee, came and visited us at, at East Garden. And so in, it was in preparation for that, I believe. The 13,000, I think, was weighing on Father's heart. And, um, and he, came, he came in a vision, very strong. Um, I w- it was a, the scenario was that there was some kind of blessing. And um, Father was very angry. He was very angry. He was filled with holy wrath. He was actually pummeling, beating people, you know, like uh, MMA, ground and pile style, you know, really pummeling people in this room. And I remember just being filled with so much fear and dread. I was looking around and saying, oh, my God, what is happening? I was trying to, you know, find out what exactly the situation is. And, you know, Father, as he's doing this I see him, and he comes walking towards me, and his eyes lock on, lock on to my eyes. And I'm thinking, oh, my God, now now I'm dead. (laughs) Now it's my turn to get (laughs) a big whooping. And then, but Father just walked by me. He just walks by. And so I remember in the room, people are, you know, know, on on this couch, and I'm I'm hugging this, this brother and, you know, just saying whatever. And Father comes out again. He comes out again, and I hear him coming from the back room, so I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to feel a big slap on the back of my head real soon, you know? And he just walks by, and he says, absolute sex. He says, chalte sung in Korean. He says, chalte sung. Now, we usually translate it as absolute sex, but actually chalte means a whole, it has a very deep meaning. It could mean absolute. That's one part of its meaning. It also, in that context, means eternal and loyal and uh, uh, faithful. Uh, it, it has all this richness inside that one word, chalte. It means also, it could also, in that context, it could also mean like glorious. Uh, it, it can mean uh, unchanging. It can mean uh, forever. Uh, these kind of eternal, these kind of things are all incorporated into chalte in that context. So he was so clear. He just said, chalte desang, so clear. And so that day, I woke my wife up, and I told her the dream, and, uh, you know, so I wouldn't forget. And that day, we met with uh, two teams. We met with some young people, and then we met with ACLC. And I got a great question when, when we were discussing with some young people. I got a great question from this sister. She said she had uh, saw one of my sermons from a couple years back uh, when I was ministering at Chungpa Church. Uh, with the Two Rivers Choir, et cetera. And she said, you know, in one of your sermons, you, you said that, you know, True Father comes and completes all the traditions. You know, for Judeo-Christianity, he is, he is in the position of the Messiah. And for Buddhism, he is in the position of Maitreya, Buddha. And for Islam, the Mahdi. And uh, for Hinduism, the Kalki. And for Confucianism, the true righteous man. And she said, what about for people who don't believe uh, in religion, you know, uh, what about people, what about people like that, in the principle who we call conscientious people of the age, that are prepared by God, maybe seeking God through science or knowledge, etc. And then I, I didn't even, I, what, it's such a difficult question, I don't know, that is such an enormously difficult question, because for myself, if you know anything about Chanbokung in Korea, where we're uh, uh, pastoring at Chanbokung, 
we put up a beautiful, you know, um, you know, st statue of Jesus and the Buddha and uh, and, and 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 Confucius and Muhammad, you know, in, in the in the in the form of the Quran, uh, all embracing like this and facing, you know, the city. And this would this is really I was very proud of that, because of somebody who studied so many religions, then that was something of great pride to me. But honestly speaking, every day when I saw that, those statues, I was filled with inspiration on the one hand, but on the other hand, I was, I was very depressed looking at that. Because knowing these theologies, there are just some elements of these theologies, whether it's Christology or metaphysics, they, they are irreconcilable. It is almost impossible to reconcile these through even theological discussion. And so I would always be depressed looking at them. I would always be depressed but also inspired. And so when this sister asked me this question, all, this thing, all these things are flowing through my mind. And I answer, I just blurt out, absolute sex. And she's like, what? <laughs> and, I, and actually, if you think about it, this is what I said to her. I said, if you think about it, Everybody is actually thinking about sex. Nobody's talking about it, but everybody's thinking about sex. Buddhist monks are thinking about sex. Priests are thinking about sex. Imams, beyond religion, beyond race, language, beyond age groups or, or, or racial boundaries. Actually, everybody is, is thinking about sex. It's so omnipresent, it's so omnipotent, it's everywhere you walk, everywhere you go, every time you turn on a computer, every time you turn on TV, all we see is sex. And so, you know, I'm sitting here talking to this sister and saying to her, this is already what everybody is thinking about. But there's no, almost, it's like religions are silent on this is central issue. Silent. In the Buddhist monastic code, in the Vinaya Pitika, which is a monastic code for monks, there are many, 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 many regulations on sex. Specific. You know, like a monk must not, you know, place his penis between two hard surfaces, or a monk must not place the, his penis behind. There are actual, these codes within the monastic law. Because actually people are thinking about it or if have not done it. Those kind of things. But we, we don't want to talk about it. We never want to talk about it. Religious religions have been silent on this issue. And so when I was thinking about, talking, uh, about that conversation, I was thinking, what is actually the core of the principle? What is actually the core of true parents' teaching? I mean, we say it's true love, or we say it's you know, uh, you know, marriage, or the blessing, or we say it's give and receive action, or the purpose of creation, or, the, or that if true father can discover the origin of sin, or that he can explain the providential history of the Bible. But really, what are we talking about? Really, when we get into it, what is the principle all about? The principle is all about sex. That's what the principle is about. The pur purpose of creation is God in absolute sex between a true husband and a true wife, experiencing love and life and also spreading lineage throughout that family. The, 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 uh, what I call good sex, right? And then the fall of man is bad sex. It's, it's all screwed up, screwing that whole process up. The restoration, the process of restoration, the rest of the entire principle is about restoring good sex. Actually, the whole principle, the entire father's teaching, whether you talk about true love or husband and wife relationship or living for the sake of other or whether all these wonderful things that exist within his teaching, when you get down to the core of what it is he's actually teaching about, when we get through all the shyness and the, uh, you know, the bashfulness and the red cheeks and everything, uh, he's actually talking about sex. He's talking about good sex. Now this for me, I think, I think uh, uh, clarified so much in my own mind because what, I'm, what I realized is that we tried to encapsulize Father's teaching. You know, what is it? It's, it's, it's living for the sake of others or, or it's inherit the true love of God. And we tried to, how can we explain true parents' teaching in, in, in a short way? 
But actually, true parents' teaching, again, falls just on this, this fundamental topic, this fundamental theme that actually transcends every single demographic, age group, every boundary, everybody's actually saturated and brain is filled with sex. Unfortunately, in this world, it is bad sex which saturates our mind, and the people who are most vocal about sex are promoting not traditional marriages or not, tra not long-lasting relationships like that, but me me what Father would call the free love or, you know, uh, homosexual type of uh, sex. Or, you know, but very vocal about this so that we can't, we can't not hear it. Right? So wherever we, wherever we go in society, wherever we go, or even in our, in our schools, teaching middle school, school kids about sex and education, about, you know, penis and vagina, and also, you know, uh, uh, putting condoms on bananas. This is a reality of our kids that have to grow up in this world. But religious people don't want to talk about it because it's unholy, because we were, had to be celibate, and we're not supposed to be talking about these issues. It's not holy. See, this is what Father is so, this is why Father is so radically different. When I was with him, every day, every day, I would get a lecture on absolute sex. He would talk about it all the time. He would talk about it in the morning, we'd talk about sex. In the eat, lunchtime, he'd talk about sex. At dinner time, he's talking about sex. Before he goes to bed, he's talking about sex. In the morning, when we wake up, Hundoke, he's talking about sex. At every time, above 20 minutes long, Father is talking about sex. Concave, convex, penis, vagina. Every day, every day, it was a reality. Every day, Father was talking about this all the time. And yet all of us would hear this and we would be shy. We'd think, what the heck is Reverend Moon talking about? Why is Father talking like that? I remember he had world presidents. We had the president of Samoa, I believe, uh, or one of the presidents of Oceania in Hundoke. And Father was going into graphic detail about sex. And he's sitting there thinking, what is going on? The translators didn't want to translate <laughs> Father's words. So why is Father, why is he talking so much about sex? And we are, we are closing our ears. We don't want to hear about it. We're embarrassed about it. If you think about it, the only, only, only uh, voice that's out there proclaiming and celebrating sex is, as, as Father would always say, is Satan, who has dominated the world, who has controlled the minds and hearts of all, by infusing it every day, 24 hours a day, every time you turn on the TV and the computer and the radio and the whatever, saturated, saturated by bad sex. So, I was a little shocked, you know, to discover, hey, my God, Father, you, <laughs> the core of all your teachings is actually you're talking about sex. You know, I, I, I didn't know that it was, even though you were beating it into my, our heads every day for the last two years, hundreds and hundreds of days, uh, we still did not, it didn't come clearly in our mind. And so I took, I took a look at uh, Father, some of Father's words. I just, I just looked it up in Chun Sung-gyung, just to see. And I got this huge list of Father talking about absolute sex. And we, again, absolute sex being a very broad and beautiful meaning uh, with sex. I think one of the things as a young person growing up in this movement, all we hear is about the fall. We hear about the bad sex and evil sex and fallen sex. It's terrible. It's horrible. It's, it's destroyed everything. It's created Satan's lineage throughout the world. And it's the, you have to, you know, and it's evil. It's so evil. And then once we're blessed, it's okay. Bye-bye. You have lots of children. <laughs> All we heard is that it was evil, it was terrible, it's, it's, it's demeaning, it's degrading, it's wicked. That's all we heard. It, in our, we, there's, where is the movement where we are also hearing about the glory, the glory, the joy, the pleasure, the enjoyment where God is dwelling within sex? See, we don't want to talk about it. We all think about it. We don't want to talk about it. Me too. I'm more like a Buddhist monk. My God, I don't want to talk about it all the time. But my God, Father, Father was so clear in this vision. He was so clear. This is the center of it all. So let's look at some of his words. Just in case some of you don't believe me. <laughs> let's look at some of his words. 
And I, I, I'm, I, well, this is a 96 in D.C. This was in search of the origin of the universe. Let's read it together. Then what did God, oh, excuse me. This is where we had so many dignitaries. We had high-level VIPs there, and we had this beautiful banquet, and it's very, you know, classy, and here Father goes. Okay, what's he going to talk about? Let's, let's read. Then what did God expect from Adam and Eve? God expected absolute sex from them. You world leaders gathered here tonight, please learn this truth and take it back to your countries. If you start a campaign to secure absolute sex in your country, your families and your nation will go straight to heaven. When there is absolute sex, an absolute couple will emerge automatically. Words such as free sex, homosexual, and lesbian will naturally disappear. This was in 96. This was in 96. Let's look at some other ones. This is Chun Sung Kyung, page 538. Let's look at this together. Come on, let's re read the blue part with me. Read, it, read, read, read with me. From now on, please make the absolutely pure sexual organ, unique sexual organ, unchanging sexual organ, an eternal sexual organ, the basis of your pursuit of God. The basis of your pursuit of God. My God. I mean, I said it, I said it in, a, in, a, in, a, in a sermon on Wednesday. If you are pursuing your spouse, you are, as a true husband, you are pursuing your spouse. And specifically, as Father says, your spouse's holy sexual organ, then you are pursuing God is what he's saying. Who's talking like this in the world? Who is talking about sex like this so clearly? Nobody, nobody. We only have other voices that teach us what sex, what good sex should be. True father is the only one. Let's look at the next one. This is Chun Sung Young, 1287. There's, and if you have Chun Sung Young, look through it. There's so, there's literally dozens and dozens, almost endless supply of, 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 of words on this topic. Let's look at that question, uh, that, the blue parts together. We'll start from that sentence. You. Come on, let's read together, buddy. You should understand that it is the original source and starting point of the kingdom of heaven on earth and in spirit world. It is also the origin of freedom, happiness, and peace. Father is saying the sexual organ, is he talking about that when, when he's talking about it, is the original source and starting point of the kingdom of God on earth and in the spirit world. That when a true husband and a true wife in complete true love, living for the sake of others, sacrificing for each other, loving each other fully and completely, serving each other fully and completely, then in that relationship is the kingdom of heaven that it begins. That it is also the origin of freedom, happiness, peace. Let's look at the next one, 1290. And I'm going to focus on the blue ones. Let's read together. If you use your sexual organs according to God's standard of absolute love, you will go to the highest realm of the kingdom of heaven. I don't know, but you know, in our church, when I was growing up, I didn't hear about sex a lot. I only heard about fall and bad sex. And when I looked at our couples, you know, I didn't see them loving each other so lovey-dovey to love and kissing all the time. No, I always saw them in different rooms, in different areas, you know, never, never touching, never holding. And, you know, always, you know, I, that's not inspiring for me as a young person. I, I don't want to get married then. I don't want to be blessed if that's going to be what it's like. I want to be in a warm and loving and, and embracing relationship. I want to be, I want to, you know, I want to, our blessed families, if we had, if we would show that, if we were so open about talking about true love and what Father's so open about talking sexual organs all the time and, and how, and playful, playful and joyful like that. My God, then maybe, well, I did want to get married because I saw father and mother's relationship. But then we can also be inspired as young people to also want to get the blessing, to want to go towards marriage and not be always, de you know, tempted by the other side, what's, uh, what the secular word is offering us, you know. This is, I think, such a big, big thing that weighed on my own heart. But Father says so clearly that it is, 
It is, you will go to the highest realm of the kingdom of heaven. He's not, not ashamed, not ashamed about talking about sex. Only we are. We're ashamed of it. And so, you know, I'm still, I still feel uncomfortable speaking to you all about it. My fa face is pretty red, I think. But I'm doing it because Father actually is so clear. It's the center of his teaching. Let's look at Chun Sing Young, page 1290. And read together the blue section. The kingdom of heaven on earth and in spirit world. Oh, okay, hold on. Let me get 1290. Next, next slide, please. There we go. Let's read the blue together. Come on. The kingdom of heaven on earth and in spirit world and the origin of God's happiness. Okay, that's not it. Is that not it? Okay, next one, next one. Next one. There we go. Is that it? Okay, we'll do that together. This is a nice one. This is nice. Come on, read it together. The kingdom of heaven on earth and in spirit world and the origin of God's happiness are molded there. God's laughter begins from there. The love organ is a place where God can find love and dance for joy. True father is saying that God is dancing in a true husband and a true wife's jalapeno and, you know, jalapeno and, 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 and rose is what he called it, right? Or lotus flower, whatever he called it. <laughs> they, are, they are dance. God is dancing and he's dancing there. He's, in, he's totally fulfilled there. He's happy when that marriage is coming together and it's surrounded in serving each other and loving each other, etc. Let's look at the next one. Uh, the next thing is, uh, but I love this one because Father says that God is dancing with joy. But in the next slide, Father has been so clear, I think, when, that we have seen, that he, he says so clearly that the teaching, the core of his teaching, the key, the key of the principle is absolute sex, what he called chaiteso, and what he so openly talked about. And he says this is also the starting point of heaven, as you, as you all read with me. When we look at the parables of Jesus, and we, 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 we went over this uh, in, in part today, but look even what Jesus is saying in Matthew 13. When the disciples asked him, why do you speak to the people in parables? Jesus replies, because the knowledge of the secrets of the kingdom of heaven has been given to you, but not to them. So was fulfilled what was spoken through the prophet, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things hidden since the creation of the world. When I read this, I'm thinking, my God, Jesus, 2,000 years ago, was talking about absolute sex. He knew the principle of creation. He knew the fall of man. And he was sharing this as secrets to his disciples. But because of the fall and uh, because of faithlessness of the people, he could not share it clearly. Remember, compare this to father's life. When father was 30 and 33, he could not speak clearly about this issue. Remember, because the whole environment when he was that young, like my age, when he was preaching about this, he had to teach it almost in secret. It's only when he gets older, like when he gets more senior in age, when he's 70 and 80, where it really starts coming out like a flood. It really starts getting clear, very clear what he means. But when he's Jesus' age, he was almost speaking in parables about it. He was almost speaking in symbolic language about it. Here we see even in this chapter, Matthew 13, Jesus talks about these, all the, he uses all these parables as names for the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is like a parable of the sower, is like the parable of the mustard seed, is like yeast, is like a, 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 a treasure hidden in a field or a merchant looking for flying pearls or a fishing net or the weed. Jesus is talking about something. And if you read these things without the knowledge of what the purpose of creation, what the fall, and what restoration is, you're not going to understand what Jesus is talking about. But because true parents, as the Lord of the second advent, comes clear that Jesus here, the kingdom of God, is clear. It's starting from absolute sex, convex concave, as he always said. True husband, true wife, eternal, forever, unchanging. That's where the kingdom is happening. Then you understand actually what these parables are preaching, what they're meaning. I want to look at one of these because of time. We're not going to look at all of these, but I want to almost exegete one of these, which is the parable of the weed. Look at this one. 
Look at this on the next slide, please. The parable of the weeds. Let's read this together. Jesus told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while everyone was sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. He answered, the one who sowed the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world and the good seed stands for the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people of the evil one. And the enemy who sows them is the devil. Jesus is so clear. Who sows the seed of the weed? He says so clearly. He knows it's Satan. You are of your father the devil. Jesus is so clear. The seeds of the weed that overtake the whole field is, is sowed by Satan. He's so clear. And if father was using this parable, if he was using this kind of language, we all know what he means by that. We know what he means by sowing the seed in the field and the weeds coming in from the enemy and the weed is from the devil. We know what he means. What's he talking about? He's talking about what? Bad sex? He's talking about bad sex? Or he's talking about good sex, right? Everybody say good sex. Come on, wake up, people. If you're sleeping on this topic, you got some problems. No, I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm just, I'm just joking, just joking. But you guys, think about it. Look at true father towards the end of his life, right? He's focusing on OSDP. He's saying 13,000 must learn OSDP. He made all of the country study OSDP. What is the difference between OSDP and DP? What is the main difference? It comes in the principle of creation. But clearly, more clearly, what is the difference? It's absolute sex. That's the big difference between OSDP and DP. It's absolute sex. That's the huge difference. And that is what Father was making all of us learn until his, you know, passing day. He was saying, learn OSDP. Learn. There's a little hint in there. He's talking about you got to learn about good sex. You got to practice it. You got to be full of joy. You got you to gotta be praising God and worshiping glory. God's got to be inspired by your couple and your love and your, your sex. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Where are you going to hear this in? What kind of church are you going to hear this in? My God. Oh, my Lord. Everybody thinking about it. Nobody want to talk about it. Jesus spoke in parables. Of course, we talked about it, the faithless of the people. True Father reveals the secrets. Very simple. This is very simple. Bad sex destroys the world. So what's the solution? Bad sex. That includes all those things, including adultery, including all, all those perversions, okay? Bad sex destroys the world. It destroys marriages. It destroys families. It destroys tribes and communities. It destroys nations fall before it. What's the solution? So easy. If bad sex destroys it, what rebuilds it? Good it's good sex that's rebuilding. That is the key to the kingdom of heaven and father said no spare key no spare key he said very clear the key to the kingdom is absolute sex that's what brings the husband and wife together it has to be full of joy full of you know ecstasy for god and full of divine you know enjoy dancing as father said dancing and Father, then that is strengthening marriages, strengthening families, strengthening tribes, nations, world. The kingdom is being built. Whenever I heard, in, in, I, I would hear in so many lectures, we have to build the kingdom or we have to, you know, we have to build God's word. We have to live for the sake of the other. I don't know how to do that. Where am I supposed to start? Where am I supposed to start? How am I going to do it? Tell me where I'm going to start. Clear. Don't be ashamed. Tell me clearly. Where do I start? No symbolic language. I want a very clear. Where do we start? Father's very clear. It starts with sex. Good sex. Okay, and I'm, here, I'm using good in a holy way here, people. Because truly, when it is in the, in, in the blessing. And when it is within the, the loving relationship of husband and wife that truly live for each other, serve one another. That means husbands, we help our wife paint her toenails and we, we, we take all the garbage, you know what I mean? And we do all the things, our 5%, our 5%, we do it all, okay? Like, I, I, and I, I try it every day, I try it every day, do my homework every day. Right? And in that kind of wonderful, loving relationship, then the culmination of unity, two people becoming one, chani guk, absolute sex, then God can come and dwell within our midst. True parents also, Father said, I, true parents also come and dwell in your midst. 
when you are ha- making, when you are having absolute sex with your spouse. Are you kidding me? <laughs> right? Oh my God. True parents and God is dwelling in your midst. Happy, joyful. When we're thinking about actually this kind of clarity, then for me, then, ah, oh, the teaching becomes so simple. It becomes so powerful. It unlocks every single problem and also provides the solution for every single problem, every loneliness and hole in our heart. This true love that Father is talking, and more clearly, specifically, in the culmination of that, you know, being this wonderful, intimate relationship between true husband and true wife, that is the beginning of the kingdom of heaven. Give glory to God and true parents, people. Come on. So even when we're talking about this, I know you're uncomfortable hearing me talk about this. You probably thought I'd come and talk about everybody must meditation today. And everybody close your eyes and breathe in and breathe out. You didn't think this bald man is going to talk about sex all the whole time. But I had, this is because Father's actually teaching is so clear. When we even talk in our communities, when our blessed families are able to truly enjoy the blessing. Truly, between true husband and wife, be truly happy. And that's visible and that's palpable and that's overflowing. And we're sharing together. When we were sharing with Bishop Stallings and Jesse, Reverend Tanya, and and, uh, my God, it was holy. It was holy communion. We're talking about about sex. But it was holy. It was so holy. And it was so enjoyable. And it was so, so wonderful to be able to do as a community. Right? When our communities are filled with that kind of teaching, when we are really focused on true parents' teaching, we are not being bombarded all the time by bad sex, bad sex, but we are combating that at the same time by in our churches always talking about good sex, good sex, filling our minds constantly with good sex to protect ourselves from the intrusions of Satan trying to come in every angle, every minute, every time. As soon as you walk out into the streets, you're going to get these intrusions. That's when you got to put on the, you got to put in your head, good sex got to be rotating as your meditation in here. Constantly got to be filling this mind. Then Satan can't come in. He can't be invading us. And then we can always be, always be wishing and pursuing our spouse in true love and unity. Oh my God. Anyways, so I have a lot of, I have a lot of, uh, Uh, work to do with you all, with you all, because I believe that true father in heaven, he made it so clear. I've been been struggling on this because I, I didn't really pin down what the core of our entire movement is about. And I could not pin down what the core of our theology was, or I could not pin down what the core of true parents teaching was. And I heard so many people talking about this and that, love and true love, and you know, living first together, all these, all these kind of wonderful things, but really clear. What is the password? What's the password that's going to get me in to understanding all the hundreds of volumes? What's the password that's going to let me get in and understand everything what True Father's talking about? He's talking about one thing. He's talking about true, absolute, and good sex. Don't be shy about it, people. Say good sex. Come on, don't be shy about it. Unification is shouldn't be shy about it. Stand up, people, because this time now for the good sex movement to rise and to start changing Hallelujah. marriages and to start changing Let families and to start changing communities and to start bring joy, bring joy back to marriage. True bring, celebrate sex. Celebrate good sex. It, it is time for the movement to rise and 13,000 to stand across America and spread to the rest of the world. The good sex movement is coming. It's coming. And the Lord is Lord is on, on high. He's coming on the clouds with fire. True Father is here. Let's give it up for True Father. Hallelujah. Father. Reverend Young Jin Moon, world president of the Unification Church. We'd like to present flowers now. I'd like to ask Bishop Edwards if you would escort co-pastor, Pastor Yanan M. Moon, to come forward. You can stand, you can stand in the middle there.
Let's give Yananim a hand. Our co-pastor and flowers will be presented by Dr. Luan and Mrs. Marie Rouse. Again, they were blessed in 2010. And brothers and sisters, all 50 states of America, God bless you all. This concludes our broadcast. We will have a special certificate ceremony, so please remain here in New York. God bless America, 13,000 complete. In the name of God, in the name of true parents, Haju. And our sisters will take the flowers. And Dr. Rouse, please remain. Yan and M and, and Young Jinim, we would like to ask you if you would uh, bless the people that are going to receive their certificates now. Dr. Rouse, can you go the, the other end there? Okay, I'd like to ask our certificate, the, those that will receive certificates today, they're uh, young people, they're pastors, there's all uh, representatives here, Deborah Diaz, Reverend Deborah Diaz, and Mr. Kenshin Peruta. Just shake Reverend Moon's hand as you go by. Dr. Rouse, if you can stand on the far end. Ambassador Denroy Morgan, Bishop Marcia Richard, <laughs> Bishop Cecil Riley, <laughs> Sister Andrea Solano, oh. No Cynthia Shibuya, oh. Brian Veith, oh, right. Jorge Espinoza, oh. Reverend Jorge, and also Reverend. Nagi Youssef and Reverend Deborah. All right. And I'd like to ask that we make a space in the middle next to Ambassador Morgan and Bishop Riley. If you could turn, uh, Ambassador Morgan, could you step to the left? And, and Bishop Richards, step to your right. And I'd like to invite our national pastor in the center here for the picture. All right. Dr. Rouse, if you could come down to this end, please. And if our ACLC executive board could quickly, and all the lecturers, quickly come onto the stage, we'll get a picture all together.